I had said in a previous video that uh, within that weekend, a uh, one of the first real tutorial videos around string here would be completed. And it's over two weeks now, and it's still not, so I kind of want to give an explanation. I kind of owe an explanation on that. Um, at the time, I was just finishing some stuff up uh, for a new feature. Uh, specifically, we're talking about the uh, target and jump nodes as part of the pattern. Um, I'll get into explaining exactly what that is and the hiccups uh, as this goes on. I wound up hitting quite a few barriers. Um, there's a number of I mean, issues up on GitHub, really, they are enhancements um, that I'm working on. And I noticed a lot of these actually are interrelated. That is, they can be implemented in one single sprint. And because of that, it just makes sense to implement them all at once. And I figure, since a lot of this has developed very organically, very cowboy coded rather than a uh, real serious design, um, which makes sense. It's a novel approach. You really can't plan out something that hasn't been done before because you don't know what's going to work or what's going to work well. Um, decided that I would make this pass into a large audit of the code base. Uh, going through and adding, you know, null guards where they should be, adding uh, documentation to everything. Uh, previously, the public-facing documentation was like 95% done, uh, but a lot of the internal stuff wasn't. Uh, and that is a barrier for people contributing changes or even to an extent myself maintaining it. Uh, so going through and adding in all that documentation. Um, there was also one of these enhancements, uh, exploring the possibility of using uh, simmed instructions for doing the string comparisons. And at least from my experience, because a bit more so in the past than now, I really focused on Ida. And the thing there was uh, that definitely would have worked. And uh, part of the delay uh, I, I'm having had to do with how it, even in the C-sharp world, it, it worked sometimes, but not in others. So what, what I mean by that, um, it is possible to compare multiple code points in a string at the same time using SIMD instructions. Uh, because while a string is encoded, the characters are representations of the code points, not necessarily the byte encoding of the string. And you can compare those code points in uh, vectors using SIMD instructions. So you, like on my machine, you could compare 16 characters at a single time. And obviously that's really fast. Uh, as I got into implementing this, um, well, I, I did the initial prototype and it definitely checked out in the prototype. Uh, I ran into some issues uh, going with the full implementation and that's because no matter how good you are at creating reasonable prototypes, there's always real world differences and it'll be very clear what, what that real world difference is in just a moment. Um, but I, I benchmark extensively and some of these benchmarks were done on uh, .NET framework uh, along with the NGEN. So that is .NET framework, but a native uh, Im image generation. Um, kind of the predecessor to .NET Core AOT. It, it's not great, but it, it's, it worked. Um, benchmarked on .NET Core, .NET Core AOT, and Mono. And the results I was seeing were hard to make sense of at first. Uh, on .NET Core, 
and .NET Framework, I was uh, getting far worse performance than uh, the native string uh, equals. And on the engine and AOT images, as well as on mono, my approach was considerably faster. And, and that's bizarre because you don't expect to see drastically different things like that. Um, you might expect to see little gangs or maybe even a little decrease, but then some nominal gangs on another. You don't expect to see immensely better and immensely worse with no middle ground. That That's just not that's not normal results. And what I eventually wound up figuring out, what I traced it down to, uh, some of the .NET runtimes take advantage of string interning, which is a difficult to implement well optimization. So you don't see it very often. There are a number of things that have to be in place for it to work. And in order to work well, uh, it, it really has to take advantage of garbage collection. Uh, not the deallocation side of garbage collection. Uh, I find especially when people work primarily with native languages and they have little experience with garbage collected languages, they don't understand exactly what's going on. Uh, the garbage collector doesn't just do deallocations for you. It also does memory defragmentation and memory reallocation uh, to, to help make sure that things fit well into cache sizes and don't uh, spread across uh, page boundaries and uh, other things that really help a lot. Um, that being said, I, 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 I do have a bit of a soft spot for native code. I, I I prefer dealing with the deallocations, but it's not, garbage collection actually has a lot of benefits. It's, uh, and the ability to reasonably implement string and turning is actually a big one of those. And that's why when it comes to text processing, uh, even when I was working on the edit tool stuff, um, that's a, actually a big part of, uh, well, I didn't know it at the time, but I, I'd, I'd always recognized that for some reason C Sharp was really fast at string comparisons and really good at working with text. And that that turns out to be the reason why that it uses string interning and it's really fast. Um, this is also why on the NGen and AOT images it wasn't working. Those are native code. They don't actually. How they deal with the memory management is interesting, but the garbage collector kind of goes away, sort of. Uh, it's 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 interesting, uh, but string and turning doesn't work on those. Uh, as for mono, it doesn't seem like they ever implemented string and turning, so that explains those results. And between that, all the results just make sense. Um, so with that in mind, reverted back to doing just the normal character and string comparisons like you would expect to do. And then it just goes back to finishing up the audit. Um, like I'd said, making sure everything's well documented, going through, making sure there's null guards everywhere there should be. Uh, going through and analyzing the code base overall to uh, reduce things that don't need to be there to make sure that everything is well tested. Uh, something that I had found out that I didn't realize was as bad as it really was. Um, the core library, both the extension and the patterns libraries, are completely CLS compliant. So they will work on any .NET compatible language. Uh, end of story. However, a big thing that I've wanted to do um, is make sure that there is good native feeling uh, integration. So even though through CLS compliance, the F-sharp stuff just works, 
I, I want it to feel like it's native F sharp code uh, as much as possible. Some some concessions have to be made. There's some things that just don't work very well. Um, can't be mapped into that kind of functional feeling environment or could be but at great performance loss and, and I don't want to impose that but as much as possible really get that functional feeling and it as I was going through this I realized it's really not up to my standards the the, the, the level that I hold myself accountable to um, it's still a major step up over uh, the, the various parsec options uh, just because they're so tied to a very specific behavior that it doesn't feel great on certain types of languages. Um, it's still better than that, but it it's not up to the standards that I hold myself to. Um, and so one of the things that I had been doing was rewriting all the tests to be strictly in F-sharp. The reason for that is ultimately a code coverage thing. Um, because the F-sharp stuff is just calling CLS compliant stuff, uh, it's guaranteed to go through that code path. So it's guaranteed to be testing it, but it makes sure that the, um, that as much functional style stuff is implemented as absolutely possible. Um, while also kind of minimizing the amount of work I have to do to maximize code coverage, which is just makes maintenance and overall testing easier. Uh, as well as benchmarking a lot of stuff that hadn't been benchmarked before. Um, anything from the extensions library, I never bothered to benchmark because at the time it was just like, all right, let's just implement something real quick. As long as it works, it's fine. Um, as it turns out, not all of those were working as well as I would have liked. Uh, that was another thing that I had done as, as I was testing these, I was adding far more tests and there were some bugs that got fixed. Uh, then we get into, since I'm going through and I'm doing this full audit and I'm changing things, um, implementing the target and jump nodes, target and jumper nodes. Um, how to explain these guys. The pattern works through a, while it superficially feels like parser combinators, uh, because it's still built upon combinator theory, but it's combining patterns, not parsers, a, a very subtle difference as far as the superficialities go. Um, the underlying implementation is drastically different than anything that regex or parsex do. The approach, at least the way I took it, is based on, was based on a, a decision tree. Uh, this is not a necessarily a binary tree, and in fact it's largely violated with modifiers, and some of the nodes I implemented later actually have more than two branches, so definitely not a binary tree, but it is a decision tree. Each of the nodes represents a decision. Um, realistically, it might be better to view it as each of the nodes is the individual part of the pattern, and when you call a parser on the head pattern, uh, it goes through and calls that same parser throughout whatever direction it takes through the decision tree. What I had realized is that if you separate... Okay, so the, the, the original design, um, there was a... The pattern and the node conceptually were merged into a single type. Uh, so... They're the same. What I'd realized is if you separate those, the so that the pattern is just a 
the pattern is the only exposed type, the only public type, and the nodes are all just internal to the system, that you can share a graph with each pattern being an entry. You can share the tree with each pattern being an entry point into that tree. It's a little optimization, uh, just reusing things when possible. Uh, kind of the same approach to interning, actually, where you, you're sharing things when you can. And once that separation happens, what you can then do is take a leaf somewhere in the tree and loop up to a higher point in the tree. You're now creating a cyclic graph, uh, which are risky and for numerous reasons. They're, they're a, um, not necessarily the easiest of data structures to work with, but with a large number of restrictions, you can easily work with them. And that's the only way the tree concept is violated. You always have one entry point into this graph and cycles are very well defined. So it's still conceptually basically just a tree where one specific node can cause a cycle. Uh, for the overwhelming majority of people, you, or for the overwhelming majority of patterns that people create, you just get a tree. But these cycles, the jump and target nodes, they allow for uh, recursion to exist because you figure you, you have a, a cycle in here um, something references either itself directly uh, which is your standard recursion or uh, one pattern rep, uh, recurses to another or jumps to another uh, and that ultimately goes back to itself the original one and then you have mutual recursion um, while these seem a bit esoteric the uh, the advantage is that you can implement uh, left recursive grammar rules, and I had proven that works. Oh, I'm a little tied up in exactly how to implement that best, but I had proven it works using this approach. And that's kind of a big deal because left recursion is actually rather difficult to implement well in parsers. And I did it. So, I understand not everybody really knows a lot about linguistic stuff and what, what, what the actual fuck is left recursion. Uh, a great example of it is, like, lists can be very easily defined using left recursive rules, uh, where the list is defined as the list and then the whatever the item is. And because it recurses, you just have the repeating item. Um, that's not super useful and can be easily dealt with, but the mutual recursion side of it is actually incredibly important. Uh, the best real world example I can find of that is expression statement or e expression statements, Jesus, expressions in grammars. Um, most common you'll see is arithmetic expressions, but there are others. But obviously an expression can contain an expression. And there you have that mutual cycle. So the ability to deal with that is actually really important for handling complicated real language grammars. Um, that, implementing that possibly introduces some minor breaking changes. Not anything major, but it's enough to warrant, instead of just a minor version bump, an actual major version bump, so a stringier version 2.0. And because of that uh, minor breaking change, Because of that breaking change, it makes sense to slightly delay a tutorial video, just so that I'm not releasing a tutorial and then having minor stuff about it not work. Uh, just 
a week or two later. That's kind of a shot to qual to product confidence. So, yep, yeah. that's the delay. Um, I am in the meantime going to be doing some videos on advanced C sharp and F sharp stuff, uh, especially. I will today be recording a video on um, how to nicely integrate F sharp and C sharp uh, together, since that's something I see a lot of projects not really do. They kind of just, uh, hey, we implemented what we think is CLS compliant stuff, and hopefully you can call it all from F sharp. But it's nice to offer some actual proper F sharp support. So, yeah, look forward to that. I'm definitely recording it today. I'm literally recording it as soon as I upload this video. Um, I don't know if I'll can be able to finish editing it today, but until then, have a good one, guys. <laughs>